Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Age of Empires 2 and today I bring you a match from the Empire Wars game mode and this is Red Bull Wololo, El Renado's ranked ladder. For those of you who don't know, this is a ladder that's deeply tied to qualifying for Red Bull Wololo, El Renado, one of the biggest S tier tournaments in the near future that's coming to Age of Empires 2 and these are two of the highest level players in regards to this tournament. Here in the south, in the blue color, Playing as the Huns, we have Winchester, and in the north, in the red color, we have none other than Mr. Yo playing with the Vikings. And this tournament, Red Bull Wololo, uh, 8 players will qualify to the main event, 2 have qualified via Invitation, Tato and uh, the Viper, then 4 players got direct asset access to the tournament through the rank ladder, Leary, Hera, Sebastian and MBL, and now the qualifiers are on the way, the last chance qualifiers, this will be a turn tournament format with single elimination and the best two players in this format will make it through to the final slots of the main event and Yo and Winchester are both favorites and this is a format where we casters don't have a lot of time to, to, to do the chatting because we already have some action here on the field uh, Yo opening up with archers while Winchester went for uh, aggressive scout play and already got two archer picks and this is very important when playing against archers um, archers is one of the builds either archers or cav archers where getting that critical mass of units is the most important so every single amount of damage that Winchester can cause at every single archer pick will delay Yo's death fall and Vikings versus Huns uh, this is a very interesting matchup of course the Huns will have a harder time walling, they prefer to play more open, more aggressive, they have great cavalry, great cav archers, while the vikings, um, a great um, sieve for, for the water, for the hybrid maps, a lot of players are fans of the vikings uh, in terms of like the sieve flavor and everything, and get frustrated because they have fallen a little bit out of fashion lately, especially if you consider Arabia, so I do think a lot of people will be glad to see the Vikings getting picked here by a high elo player at the highest level. You need to see the scouts here idling, there's so much going on already. These players, yeah, this this match mode, uh, Empire Wars played at the highest level is no time to build up, no time for the calm dark age action left, right and center. And we see Winchester already grabbing a quite comfortable eco KD 6-2. And with more res collected, but this map is Golden Stream, and uh, this is a map where map control is very important. We see that Yo was the first one to move forward, and he's getting a huge advantage, which is this the food from these box turtles, um, gathering f food from from the shorefish, like the box turtles, is very efficient. And now we see the scouts are trying to pick off a villager, but these high low players react so quickly. We see the demo ship there, taking only two archers. We see Gal is being added. No villager has fallen yet, but yeah, one goes down to the scouts. And uh, a lot of scouts also going on for Winchester. But yeah, Red Bull Wolo, I'm very hyped about this event. And uh, of course, some people talk about the, the how the qualifying were, a lot of mirror matches, and I did not want to cast a mirror match because we won't be having mirror matches with the draft and uh, every stage that's normal to a tournament. We see here some quick balls, but there's still an opening there in the back that Winchester can find. But yeah, Yo moves right away there. Doesn't want to play this game of chasing scouts inside my base. And he's almost fully walled, just a small gap here in the bottom that can be easily addressed. We see both players with even military numbers, but Winchester with a slight. Eco lead, had less idle TC time, picked off one villager, and both click up to Castleage at almost the exact same time. Of course, as I was saying, this map not it's not only the about the box turtles, of course they provide a good bonus for your for your food, but it's also about all of this juicy gold here in the middle. We have around 40k gold here, and map control is key in this style of maps. This is a very Tournament style of map. We see hybrid, we see uh, terrain, we see the gold in the middle. This is one of my favorite maps from the from the pool of, of maps for Red Bull Wololo. 
And this elo right here on top, this is not the, the, the regular elo from these two players, just to make it clear. This is their current elo in the Red Bull Wololo um, uh, special, special bracket, special ranked scene. But yeah, we see bloodlines and padded archer armor. So I do think, <laughs> and seeing these four archer ranges, it's not no longer. I think I'm sure Winchester will go for some cav archers with the Huns. That's to be expected. And yo, I wonder what the play will be. We see a lot more of an investment to water. Winchester adds a, a secret dock here, and demo rafts can do big plays in this style of maps. You have the army crossing the hybrid terrain, and you do need to cross the hybrid terrain. It splits the map in the middle and just for some villager picks these three villagers a demo raft here is already a huge investment and i have a feeling that's exactly what we're going to see let's keep an eye out it's so hard to react to this in time this is some log boats being added and the villagers take the long path around they split okay only one villager amazing reaction by by mr yo i swear hi yellow players see everything that's happening but you see already for um for Cav Archers on the field, um, Huns do have a discount for Cav Archer production. And uh, we see Knights from Yo, and Viking Knights are not the. They don't have the best stables in the unit, vi uh, in the game. Vikings are missing bloodlines, are missing. Uh, um, oh, what's the name of the deck? Are, mi are missing basically everything. Bloodline husbandry, so playing the night line is not your long-term goal with the Vikings. Vikings love have a good archer uh, line. They have good siege. They have a good. Um, they have good infantry, of course, but it can be hard to play infantry at the highest elos. We see three TCs being added right away from Yo, while Winchester is playing more on the aggressive side. We see a forward siege workshop that. Isn't spotted, and he's even taking this gold from f for free. So Winchester grabbing himself quite a good position in game, playing one TC. So now Winchester has the time pressure on him. He's playing one TC. He needs to cause damage. If the game, if nothing happens, if Yo can just play peacefully, can just boom, he will run away with the game. We see some scorpions getting added. This is a great uh, response to. Um, to the cav archers and skirmishers unupgraded are not that great against cav archers they are good of course they are a counter unit but they really need the elite skirm upgrade to get, grab some extra uh, bonus damage to grab that extra health and we do see now the push here is revealed yo right away adding a, a second wall behind a quick reactions here Winchester grabbing some uh, additional eco upgrades and the, the map control from Yo, and we I did talk about how in this style of maps it's very important. Yo is not only grabbing the, the best position in regards to Boom, he's grabbing an insane amount of map control. So if he can stabilize, he will be in a stellar position. But now he needs to survive, he needs to mitigate. It's not... He's not necessarily required to clear this up. What he needs is to delay this, to make sure this can't, can't cause any significant damage. See the mangonels there trying to fight off against each other. This is such a wonky, <laughs> a wonky style of micro. <laughs> oh, oh, that was clean from Yo. And the villager is here. And the villager will take down the mango. Will the mango be able to shoot? No, it didn't. Oh, yeah. And while all of this is happening, a lot of other things are happening. Yo tried to add a TC here in the middle to secure that gold, but got denied by the Cav Archers. We do see that they are just outside of range. Yo probably wants to hit them, but they're just outside of the range. It, it's very good for Winchester to be grabbing the, the gold from the opponent's side of the map. You see a lot of... And this is also, this is not only control, this is uh, vision. You, now you know if your opponent is heading out this way, you know that he has this side of the map. So rather than the map being split by the lake, by the water, it's actually being split uh, the top and bottom half. We do see an outpost getting added, and outposts are, of course, very important and a thing that a lot of lower level players underestimate. See handcart on the way, a lot of... Production villains and 
the idle TC time, of course, Winchester only had one TC for a long time, but both of these players rocking a very low idle TC time. Oh, this is exactly the kind of damage that Winchester needs. Um, they are lacking ballistics, and Cav archers are a lot harder to micro without ballistics. It feels like normal archers miss everything, Cav archers are even worse. We see the long bolts, and this is a, getting to be a scary number of long bolts already. Of course, they are also missing ballistics, so and targeting cav archers is harder. And while all of this is happening, the scorpion there clears up. The army here from Yo is no longer pressuring. We do see a stable transition, and that's the power of the hunts. Uh, it's mobility, cavalry, pressure. But we do see Yo is starting to get away with both the eco lead and the military lead. Of course, this is only six villagers right now, but the map control is in favor of Yo. So right now, Winchester needs to think, okay, what's my next move? What's my next game plan? He is floating a lot of gold. That's a lot of gold to be floating, and he has a little bit of gold here. He exhausted the main gold in his base. Yeah, he running out of gold, even though he has a bank, can be one of his conditions to get out of the game. So he's securing this side of the map, adding his 4 TC, it's 4 versus 4 TCs. The long boats are targeting any unit that tries to cross. You can cross this water, but not without paying a price for it. And the water control is massive for you right now. Oh, the single knight there. And that's something we do see at high elo. A lot of players are like, okay, Viking Knights are not great, I will not build Viking Knights. But Knights are a good unit. You don't need to have great Knights for your Knights to do great things. If they are the correct unit for the for the circumstance, go for it. And there we saw the Knights causing some damage. Winchester trying to... Uh, yes, Winchester trying to find some damage here with, uh, with his own Knights now. And the Huns much prefer to be playing on... Knights and this is <laughs> the high elo. It's amazing. Both players click to imp at the same time, but Yo is solidifying his map position, dropping a, what I believe to be a very commanding and powerful castle here in the forward of the map, in the center of the map. You see a monastery getting added for some relics. Some of the scorpions get cleared. Monastery from Yo. These players are. Synchronize. Oh, when this castle is not under under Yo's vision, it does secure some of some resources here, and I'm curious to see what we'll spend yes. from this. Okay, okay, they they pause the game for a little bit. That happens at all elos, of course. See some some skirms here on the defense for Finchester, but right now I much prefer Yo's position. Winchester needs to do something. And I was watching, I don't know the result of this game, but I was watching these two, the results on AoE2 Insights, and it's like, Winchester wins one, Yo wins another one. Winchester wins the next one, Yo wins the next one. So, these two players are very neck and neck when it comes to their Empire Wars. Probably depends on the Civ matchup, it depends on the map, it depends on the execution. These are two of the favorites now for the two final spots. But they're, they are not the only favorites. There's a lot of great players who will be fighting. Uh, it starts this Saturday, the last chance qualifiers, 10th of August, until the 18th of August, the Sunday of next week. And the longboat's just zapping away those arrows. And balli yeah, ballistics is in for, for you. I like this defensive castle. You've secured map control, now you have a castle to secure your own base. And for Vikings... The transition to to Berserkers can be wonk, a wonky one, but they are a good unit. Especially with the upgrades that grant them extra damage versus cavalry. Uh, yeah, and for raiding. Just a single Berserker can cause so much damage. Just being annoying. We see both players adding trebuchets. Uh, the Hunt player, Winchester, adding some Tarkans that are a great unit for against buildings for also for raiding and the the berserk regenerating health doing all he can to be annoying forcing the idle eco time going back and forth 
Berserks, Berserkers are supposed to be... Uh, Berserks are supposed to be raiding units and they are fulfilling that job down to at the end. This is very important. Yo can securely have his units on water because he does have the water control. Now on the other side, Winchester is trapping down the old castle. They are both going for the repair. Winchester doing a light cap transition, getting more upgrades for the cav archers. Uh, Chieftains is in for, for Yo. He should also be thinking about Boxvegar and... Uh, yeah, both players did a great job at booming, uh, even um, eco numbers. But we do see a TC going down, some production buildings will also go down. The um, Winchester was forced to place this castle here because he was already under pressure when he was, uh, when he placed the castle. It, probably there were other places he would prefer to have it. But the problem is this castle, yes, it's a lot of your wood line, but it doesn't protect a lot of your main economy, especially the farms. Farms are the hardest to relocate economy, and Yo has a clear venue here through the middle of the map. We see his elite berserker, and this is people who are fans of the Vikings. This is what they want to see. They want the Viking fans love to see the long boats, the late game elite berserkers. Yo is in a great position, both. Stylistically speaking, but also gameplay speaking, you want to reach this this imp army. Uh, of course, the berserks are not the best unit against the cav archers, but they're also not the worst, especially because the cav archers are lacking the numbers, so the berserks can get can get closed and can deal a lot of damage, and they will start pressing this position, and then once uh, Winchester loses this position, yo has everything he wants in the game. He has a secure base, he has the control over the middle, he has um, a great economic balance, he's pushing through the middle, and I feel like if this was a lower elo game, anything could happen. Considering the high level of both of these players, I feel like Yo won this. And it was the, the lack of damage from Winchester's push, Yo went for a more greedy approach, and he was able to defend, was able to mitigate the amount of damage. I feel like the water control also played wonders and he was uh, fully uncontested in that water control. That, that's a decision you have to make as a player. Do I contest that or do I just give it to my opponent? And we do see Parson Tactics going in and the Huns could, can be very scary late game as well, but they won't reach that critical mass. You see the Berserks causing so much damage and they are hard to deal with the health regen and everything, it means that if you don't take care of them right away, they will just be right back up at full HP. After a while, this forward position will get completely cleared up. We see a second castle here added by Winchester, and Winchester is running out of gold, running out of villagers, running out of space. I mean, not running out of villagers, players at this level. I don't know how they do it. They, <laughs> Their build production, it always feels like they should be having less villagers, but they do have insane build production. This is the long boats. Not the strongest unit, but they are uh, They are contesting here, they are causing damage, more longboats arrive now. Of course they are uh, castle age longboats, and I do like the fact that they are castle age longboats, there's no need to overcome it. Maybe some more upgrades for the longboats coming in. The traps are in, there's no, no way to deal with them. Another TC is going down, the farming economy that's also important is getting Completely shut down. Yo, is even... Wow, <laughs> the amount of dogs here. <laughs> if these were... Uh, I think it is Malay dogs that can get upgraded to fire arrows. But still, this is a lot of dogs and this will be a lot of longboat production. And if you've reached this point where the map is split in half, as Yo reached, now he can just secure his side of the map and naval units are very strong in the game overall. That's why these uh, uh, hybrid maps can be very tricky and the GG is called. Yeah, both of these players with uh, an amazing performance looking at uh, the APM. Actually, Winchester was the, was the fastest player here, but uh, Yo with uh, 3TC, this is a, was a... Textbook match of Clash of Styles, one player went for the defensive and booming approach, while other went for 1TC and full aggressive. 
and I feel like in some key moments, of course, this was a very fast-paced match. It's a lot harder to be <laughs> for me as a caster to analyze the strategies and everything. But I do feel like you know, securing the water and being able to run away with the boom without having too much damage being caused. Maybe Winchester should have added the second and third TC sooner, but that's easier to, to say as a caster. And at the end of the day, he lost the position. He didn't have that great of an economy once he reached limp and a viking player was able to play the game that he wanted yo wins this one but as i said this is back and forth this is neck and neck and i'm looking forward to see how these two players fare up and let's see if they meet up in red bull Wolos last chance qualifiers or if they both go through different brackets and make it to the main event i'm Danando, had a huge pleasure casting this match as always leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you around bye bye everyone